Chaim, 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 Chaim. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you have a specific way how you warm up before a, um, a concert or a show? Is that how you want to warm up for the podcast? Well, yeah, possibly, yeah. We can warm up together. I mean, it's something that... Yeah. How would you so, do it? Is there something like... Try doing this. Almost. Mm. I, I, I may See? have developed polyps. I don't know. I may I have to check that out. If I'm like should. streaming bar mitzvahs all the time, like yeah, rah, rah. You hear like the hoarseness? Yeah, but that's kind of who you are. It's that's part of who I am. Yeah, yeah. there's there's life. There's, there's bigger. Life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just all those bar mitzvahs and all those screaming and all those shouting in the streets, cheering on people is in that voice. It's in that voice, yeah. You're yeah. saying it's, it's part of the Mary Kay brand. I can't get rid of it now. Exactly. Got it, got it. Your voice is obviously the opposite. It's clear, it's angelic, a, a true agree. tenor. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Did you always have such a beautiful voice? Was it something that you worked on? Is it comes naturally to you? Um, I don't remember my entire life if I had that <laughs> voice. I don't know. Okay. But the truth is, um, people con- people constantly ask. Do you think if I would go to lessons, I would you know sound like this or something? No, you can't change your voice. Your voice is natural, and this is who you are. Mm. You could train your voice to be clearer and more powerful, and not get hoarse, and to be have a better sound, better vowels, but this is your voice and your voice is your voice. So. There's no way of developing more range? Yeah, of course, yeah, you, could, okay. you could develop more range. You can't change your natural voice of who you are. So it's Got not it. gonna sound differently. Right. You can expand your range and stuff like that. So. Right, and, but you grew up in a home that was filled with music. So, I mean, your dad? More or less, my father, not really. He okay. enjoys chazanas a lot, mm-hmm. but he doesn't sing at all. At all. No. So it's just you and your brother? I know Yankee as well as yeah, your older yeah, brother. Yeah. He does, uh, it's, yeah, just the two of us really that do it professionally. And yeah, there's one more brother that also kind of sings. And, but yeah, more or less the entire family. Does. And not only that, extended family or grandparents or uncles or aunts. No one is in the music industry or no one is even musically talented. Wow. So that's- They're actually like tone the, deaf. They, yeah, more or less. <laughs> so wait a second. That's, that's Hold on. My mother's family is- Talented, mostly like artists more. Okay. Not in the singing space. So it's very, uh, it's 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 a mystery. It's a mystery. Have you, so where, where did from? you find this love and passion towards music? When did you first come across it? And how did you know that this is something you wanted to pursue? So I did grow up with a love for music. Like I said, my father enjoyed Chazanas a lot and we always had the regular Jewish albums out. Um, but I was in yeshiva or as a young teenager, Yankee already was studying chazanis. And that's kind of what got me into it, but mm-hmm. more of a professional level. Um, but at the same time, uh, my sister, sister Leah Shalom, she passed away, but she was very encouraging for me to, to sing. She always they taught me the song, I should listen to this song, make sure you memorize the lyrics to that song. She wanted, she pushed me the first time on stage in public. Wow. She was, it was by my cousin's wedding or possibly my brother's wedding. She was like, you're going to sing. You're going to sing in that. And I was the most shy kid, like really. How old were you then? About 10, 11, 11 12, yeah. yeah, 11, 12. Before Bar Mitzvah. Before Bar Mitzvah. And I was so shy, even between my friends, I didn't even speak up. That's how shy I was. Wow. And she was like, no, no, you're going to memorize the song. You're going to go, you're going to sing. So I remember I went, I sang there at the wedding and I was so comfortable. I was so nervous before, but once I started singing, I was comfortable and I was like, wow, this is my spot. This is where I'm at. You found and like your happiest place. You're just yeah, like, this is exactly. just in a groove. Exactly. Wow. And so, from, there- uh, from there, you know, some, um, from there, Yankee knew some people. Yankee, Dudi Kalash was then working on an album and he asked if he knows if it had been child soloists, like a yellow pella. He's working on something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, of course, my brother, you just sang at a wedding. He's, he's good. So, we went to the studio, we recorded that. Um, from then on, I did some other, some more albums, like as a child soloist. Sure. And then things took off. Things took off. I went to Yeshiva and then, uh, yeah. Before we but get. I, th- I definitely credit my sister. Um, too bad she's not here with us to sh- to, to hear and Shep yeah as much, but uh, I credit her a lot for. Her. Was that her passing? Was how did that affect you as personally and, and the family as a whole? Uh, very much so. She passed away in a car accident just six weeks after she got married, age of twenty three. Wow. It's never the same, you know. It's it's there's a 
void and there's a hole in the entire family always. Um, I'm the youngest in the family. I was just 13 when she passed away. Mm. Uh, Not too but, long after when she gave you that push yeah, to get exactly. on stage. Yeah, yeah 100%. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's very sad. But, you know, we know that we have a representative up there for the entire family. That's incredible. Wow. So when you were, when you were growing up and, um, and, you know, starting to pursue this idea of music and you started, you know, joining on, on uh, joining CDs and, and albums and being surrounded by that, who were some of the people that you looked up to in that world, in that space, some of the singers or the cantors that you were like, wow, that person has talent or that's someone who I want to, you know, grow up to be like? It was obviously the, you know, we all grew up in the same space. It's yeah. Mordechai Ben David, Avram Fried, and then, yeah, you know, Shweki, Lipa Schmelzer, or whatever, whoever the, the, the hack was then. Okay. And you look up to them. Uh, but studying, growing up with, with Chazanis as well, there was obviously the other aspect as, uh, on, on the Chazanis side, which obviously Moshe Oisher was one of my favorite Chazanim mm. because he did the singing, the Chazanis, the everything that together. Mix, that, yeah. Oh, Moshe Kosovitsky, Asla Rosenblatt, Hirschman, well, well, you know, the, whole, the Chazanis aspect as well. And that got me kind of into opera as well. He got me into uh, Pavarotti listening. And I remember hearing the voice the first time. I was like, wow, this is just so clean and just so pure. Where in this your stage of I life were you the first when you heard Pavarotti for the first time or, or secular music? Um, probably like 15, 16. Yeah. Was that like something like between like yeshiva breaks going and like getting a CD and like something no, you have to like no, hide not, away from the... No, no, not at all. It was no. in, in, in my house and at home. We, you know, I had act Pavarotti and uh, mostly that, mostly opera. Mm -hmm. uh, later on when I was in yeshiva in Israel, when I started working with real professionals, I did a lot of backup vocals. Those few years, probably every Jewish album that came out, I did backup vocals on, be it um, Mona Rosenblum, Moishi Roth, uh, Dudi Kalish, Yosef Moishi Kahana, Brisk, uh, all the choirs in Israel. Wow. I did the- uh, And you just landed those jobs them. yourself or you had someone who was representing you? No, myself. It just... started from knowing one, I knew Dudi Kalish from when I sang as a kid. Yeah. And then, you know, I, we, we, I reached out to him when I was there. For those who don't know who Dudi Kalish is, who's Dudi Kalish? He is a musical, like arranger, composer, in the Hasidic world. So he did a lot of uh, songs and, and albums. You probably know, you know many of his songs. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I know yeah. He, he, that it's him. <laughs> right. Got it, wow. But, but I started with, you know, from then on, a role to, to other other arrangers. So that opened up working with these professionals and working, telling them, you know, this kind of music, that kind of music opened up a whole new world for me, not only in the Jewish world, but in the secular music as well. Right, but it's what well, it sounds very interesting because like you grew up in a, you know, Orthodox home in here right. in New York, Correct. and um, and yet, but it seems like it wasn't so typical. Or from what many people may think, like, what do you mean? You grow up in a house, you have like you know, payas, you have sirens, and yet you like you're listening to Pavarotti, listening to like different types of cantorial music in the house. Like, how how is, do those two worlds mesh? But it seems like right, yeah. I think it's it's every every household is different in the way they do things. It's not a one blanket uh, generalization of how things are in, in a traditional home. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not as common if you're not in the music industry or if you're not involved in music. But if you're involved in music and you're you're really, you know, studying, I, I taught myself the drums a little bit. I taught myself guitar to read music. This is all while I was 15, 14. Wow, what, YouTube videos or? Uh, no, just books, actually. By that books? was before YouTube videos. Oh, wow, man, books, you're dating yourself right now. Before <laughs> YouTube, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. So we, yeah, and, and you, you know, you get your hands on different music and you listen to it and it's encouraged and you wanna, you know, people want you to, uh, they want you to be better succeed at succeed and grow. Exactly. So your parents or your support system were behind you in, in pursuing this type of, type of work? Uh, I wasn't pursuing it per se. I wasn't making a plan, uh, being proactive. Okay, this is who I want to be. I want to become a singer and this is what I need to do to accomplish that. I had just enjoyed it and I lived in it. And I, you know, during, well, I was in yeshiva. So it was on my off time when I came home or when I, even when I went to Israel, it was, I was in yeshiva most of the day, but when I had time, I did, uh, I enjoyed it. And then one opportunity came after the other opportunity and Hashem has his ways. One reaches out to you and you say, yeah, why not? Maybe. And then another one reaches out and then 
you know. That's did you have nice. did you have certain ideas and plans while you were in yeshiva? Just doing music as a side, as a hobby. Did you have certain ideas of like where you saw yourself ending up going professionally? Not really, because it was always a question I was I was asking myself, and people always asking me, "Are you going to become a chazan?" Because you know my brother was a successful chazan at the time already. He was yeah. a, he a, established a, himself. Yeah, he established himself. He's a name. So obviously the name goes with you know being a chazan, and I was more you know in the music really. So hey, are you gonna become a singer? Are you gonna become a chazan? I'm like, I don't know. I I I'm just doing my thing, yeah. you know. And that's what yeah. happened actually. I started singing in the Shira choir, and uh, people started saying, "Okay, do you want to do solos? Do you want to do?" And they did do solos, and it became like a blend of singing and chazanas. I kind of made my own identity and own brand, and. That's what it became from there. So would you say that it's, it's actually quite incredible? Like you had a passion, you had this hobby, which you just spent on timing and just by pursuing, just showing up to your passion, opportunity came and arose. Exactly, exactly. All right, so if someone's out there listening and they have you know something that they're excited about, keep doing it. Keep doing it, exactly. Keep. So do it for the love of the art or the love of what you enjoy doing and try to be perfect at that rather than chasing a career or chasing something uh, you know, the, the fame or stuff like that. Do the, do it for the for the art, right? So now, with someone who has a certain amount of success within the passion in the world that you start off as just you know as a hobby, how do you still keep that fire alive and not get distracted by the hustle, the fame, the next hit, the uh, the next success? Yeah. So I I think is. If you're doing it with that same thing in mind, I mean, music is music, and what is music? Music is an expression of, of within. It's from it comes from inside. If that if if not, then it's just another karaoke track. Mm. You it's it's you have to really under believe what you're singing and understand what you're singing. So if you do that that way, it's very hard to just go focus on um, another hit or something. Of course, you have to be very smart about it and, and make sure it's commercial enough and and it's. It's something that people want to hear, but it also has to, you also have to connect with it. Every song on the album is like, I, there were great songs, but if you don't connect to it, it's not you, then it's just not, for some people, it's going to sound great. But if you don't connect to it, it's just not going to be you. What's your go-to karaoke song? I don't do karaoke. I do my own. Okay. Ah, <laughs> no, but I didn't, I haven't, I, I don't do karaoke a lot, really. Okay. Use it as a reference. So I was going to throw it back at you, but... So I mean, I totally understand that you have to like connect with 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 the songs and with for you when you're on stage when you're singing, where does your mind, where does your soul go, and also what are you trying to connect with or portray or give to the world through through this through the songs that you sing. In general, it depends on the song. Okay, because specifically you have to say on each song. Uh huh. Because I I think every song has a message, not only that the. When you're singing songwriter song um, had in mind, but also you can connect to the song. So even recently, just just yesterday, I released a music video for "Bring Him Home." Right, "Bring Him Home." Yes. So what were you thinking about when you were singing "Bring Him Home"? Like, where, where did your mind, where did your soul take you? So "Bring Him Home" is really it's a tefillah, it's a prayer, kind of like most of our songs in the Hebrew songs. So that's first of all different than most of the English songs, but it also shows that. First of all, whenever you need help, first thing you do is God on high, hear my prayer. And there's so many aspects of the song that just touch your soul, touch your heart. At first, it just shows the expression of what would, what someone would do for their loved one. You know, if I die, let me die, let him live. And the entire expression, and you could, you can, I, I've had so many different visions of the song in different times where this song is so appropriate. Uh, there's not one specific general thing, but there was a woman that was that reached out to me yesterday saying that this song, you know, she was unable to have children. Once she was, uh, she was, she got pregnant, but she lost the baby. And mm. this song, after many years, this song just talks to her about how she talks to that child. And then I started a little, little bit thing like an Instagram of what does this song mean to you on this specific song, and the responses are so different but yet so personal yeah and it's amazing to see that so that's that's why i'm saying if you have to really believe it and then it comes from the heart it goes into the heart 
And people will relate to it. It will resonate with people in so many different ways. Mm. And every song is different. Yes. Every song has a different message. But in general, I think what we're trying to accomplish in music is all, all, the, all the songs on the album of The Perfect Dream are songs of unity, hope, positivity, something that we can all relate to as human beings, regardless of our background. Yeah. Which is a beautiful them. message. I'm all about right. that positivity and, and right. human connection and breaking down the barriers and bringing people together, which I want to discuss more about The Perfect Dream and your latest album and the songs on it are right. truly right. incredible. Before we do, though, a big part of your life, and you brought up multiple times in this podcast, is God, is Hashem. Right. And um, which is sort of, you know, apropos to someone who's grown up in, in an Orthodox home. True. Were there moments and times in your life and your career that that relationship was you know, on the brink of, you know, of question or, yeah, we're, what was, what's that relationship look like? No, I, I'm not at all. I actually have, it's a very close, close relationship. I think tefillah, which is prayer, is not something that you only do three times a day for us. It's something that's a constant relationship. It's a constant dialogue. And not only in a way where you say, Oh God, like that, <laughs> or, <laughs> or yeah. yeah, or oh, thank you, Hashem, or Baruch Hashem. But really, mean it. You have a you have a connection. It's at the end of the day, we all know it. It's just that how much we ex we express it and we we're mindful about it. That you know, it's all it's all from Hashem. It's all from God, and we might as well have this. We know that He wants this relationship with us. And I've always, I can, I can sit in the car and just start talking to Hashem. Really? Yeah. We just, you just start, start singing, you just start talking. Sometimes singing, sometimes, sometimes talk. talking. But in your own words. In my own words, of course. Wow. And whenever you How would anything, that look like? What, what's that even look like? What's, what, what would you say? I said, God on high, hear my prayer. Ah. No. <laughs> so it's like, thank you, Hashem, for doing this. Thank you, Hashem, for doing that. Please help me this. Figure out, I don't know what to do, my next steps. Mm -hmm. I, or I'm doing this things. I want it to be successful. Let's, you know, I want to try to do as much. All those kind of things, yeah. anything. Just so, open talk. Yes, yeah, even, my point is, even when things are bad, like you're, you're experiencing some difficulties and challenges, it's just easier when you know where you have who to turn to. So I would... Like you said, it was. I don't think it was hard. It was actually the opposite. It gave me something to lean on when I needed help, and said, "Okay, help me, and let's try to figure this out." I, you know, give me the right thoughts of even what to do next, and give me the right. So, wow, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's so important for me. I'm also I'm right now always rediscovering new ways of connecting with my higher power with Hashem in mm -hmm. um, in maybe. In the traditional ways of, of growing up, like you said, you know, praying three times a day and such, which I, I can do better at, but um, but also um, <laughs> we can all use that. <laughs> yeah, of course, there's always room to, for improvement, but also maybe a more non-conventional way, which I never really was practiced by, or even mentioned to me, but to just use my own words and just open, yeah, have course. an open dialogue, of course, and that's connect. What it's all about say, yeah, totally right, connecting with the. Um, You'll be surprised how. Uh, Look, now it's the whole, it's the whole hack, it's the whole thing of meditation uh -huh. and the- uh, Mindfulness. Mindfulness. I, I think it's all, encompasses all that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean, you, Judaism and, and the practices, there's a lot of meditation that's seeped within Judaism. I think a lot of people do believe, or at least I know I did, like it was a very Eastern type of practice. Right. Um, and we were actually, I know a lot of my friends and people were just afraid of even touching meditation. Like, oh, what do you mean? It's, right, not, it's not a right, Jewish right, thing. Right. Which through conversations with, you know, with, with rabbis and it's, it's for, and we all know if you look, look obviously it's um, prophecy. It's, it's all through meditation. It's all taking the time yeah, to yeah. really just take a if you, Especially if you read the, you know, Rab Nachman, his brother, this uh, is that for sure. And then even in general, the concept of Shemona Esri, where you stand and you're in one place. And that's also a, a way speaking to Hashem without interruption, no noise, quietly. It's also kind of a meditation. Yeah. It's not just, you know, saying the words. Right, so is there a specific prayer or a psalm that, a psalm that you relate to, that you love, that you go back to? I always say before every performance, before everything, I say, Shilam Alisa Sayin Eilarim, my Ayin Yivay Ezri. It's kind of like, it just, and me Mamakim also, but, Chilam is a sign of alarm. It's like you, wherever you are, you just lift up your eyes to the mountains or wherever you are here, right here. You're here with me, and you know, yeah, just I just mentioned on a pre, on a podcast that I um I just did um that 
in, it's actually specifically in the mountain ranges. I'm kind of speaking to people who travel, half half travel. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. right. They reached out to me yesterday. He's like, oh, you're going to America. Uh, cool. Uh, Look, yeah, they're big fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they, I was just sharing how like, in, in when I go trekking and what I love about climbing mountains, it's in those mountains and those valleys that I really connect with, with Hashem, with, uh, with my higher power. It's interesting. So, the, the Rambam actually writes that. The Rambam, Maimonides, says yeah. that if you have any question in God's existence, just look at nature. When you when you see nature, as much as you can ex explain the science behind it, you just see you just see the hand of God. Yeah, there's no denying it. There's just there's something no that's just it. like, just, just like <gasps> yeah, it's massive. There's right. something that's yeah. There's do you do you get that as well in the city? Like just being in a massive city. Oh, of course, buildings and, definitely. Or is that focused more on the hand of of man? Or do you still feel no, a sense of? No, I still of, feel a sense. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it just shows. Look what. One of the things God created was humans mm -hmm. and the power that humans can do. And look at these cities it was built. And yeah, of course. Yeah. It gives you that extra boost of energy as well when you get to the city sometimes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I get I off the subway and for some reason I'm just like, I'm starting to run. I'm just walking. I'm, I don't know why. I'm nowhere to go. <laughs> like I'm just energy. moving. Just, Every, yeah. There's an energy, electricity that just seeps through these streets. Exactly. It's amazing. And I think you've also captured that energy, but also the 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 mix and the melting pot of of the many faces and cultures in your latest music video, yeah. Where and what was the concept behind that? And what, what I mean, which which also sort of leads me to my next question, where it's um, the perfect dream, which is um, your latest um, album, which I recommend anybody listening and watching to uh, to give a listen to. Mm -hmm. It's very different and a little, very different from your, your first album and your, your course, music. right. And also very different from, uh, from I would say, the orthodox world. It's a, it's, I feel like more out there, a lot more universal. Um, pun intended. Hey, pun intended, very good, very good. Keep it up with me, bro. Ah. Um, so was that a conscious decision uh, to do that? And um, was that like the goal all along to sort of transition to a more universal message? Yes, of course. Um, Definitely. When they reached out, Universal reached out to, to do a record, to get the, the record deal, they're-, they're Okay, one second, before you answer that question, okay. take me to that time when when Grant, oh, I'm sorry, Graham Parker reached out from Universal, bring me down to the email. Like, what was, what was that like and what was your reaction? Build that story for me. All right. <sighs> there once was a boy who was- <laughs> <laughs> I was at work. I did. I, uh, I had a full time job. I was a marketing director at a tech startup, like an HR software. No way. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So that's how I got my like. I you know I built my own website. I did my got my own like marketing. Thing yeah, you do a good on. job with your marketing. So there's that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I actually remember I was at the dev team then. I was doing a little bit of UX, UI, UX design as well. So I was trying to tell the the. The coding, the the programmer, how to code certain things, and then while I was waiting for him to play around, I take out my phone just to check out my messages, and I get this email, and I kind of read it out loud. I said, like, "Hi, Graham Parker, Universal Music, and I wanted to see if you meet." And he like looks up. I right away thought that it's oh maybe this is serious. Ah, it must be a joke. So like, first you should know about it. Like it's confidential. So I was like brushed it off. Ah, nothing's that. Then wow. once I I went out of the room, I was like, okay, wait. This must be interesting. I don't know. Is this for real? Have you gotten other emails in the past where people reach out that yeah, sort yeah, of no, cynical gotten, towards no, it? No, like, I've gotten emails from different- Various labels? Very, no, 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 not labels, but people from different backgrounds, like not, not, not necessarily Jewish people. Like from the videos I've done and how much it, um, they're impressed and how much it moved them. So I was not surprised that it's just not something from, from my circles. Um, but from a record label or something like that, and that was surprising. Uh, I actually forwarded the email to my then manager, my former manager, Yachi Briskman, asking what does he think it's real? He says, hey, you never know, just set up a meeting. So we did, I set up a meeting in uh, a coffee shop in Brooklyn. So you weren't necessarily, later. you weren't like, your heart wasn't fluttering. You were like, okay, and we're cruising. Or were you like, oh my God, no, this could I be a big No, I was excited. This could be a big thing. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, wow. Uh, but I, I wasn't getting too excited. I didn't want to get too excited because I didn't know if it's real. It didn't make sense. I thought at first, I actually honestly thought it was a prank at first. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. Because wow. <laughs> like, really? Uh, but I said, why not? Let's give it a shot. Set up a meeting. 
And we met a few days later in a coffee shop in Brooklyn. Mm. And Graham came down. It was very nice. He started talking what he's doing in the music industry. He happens to be uh, discovered me on YouTube quite a while back. He was still the president of uh, WQXR, which is the classical radio station. He saw Chad Gadya, the video. was very impressed. And then he saw all my videos online. You went down the YouTube rabbit hole. Exactly. Oh, for sure, remember. It's like, <laughs> whoa, next? Relate. Oh, wow, there's more. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, then we had a great discussion. If, if I would if I would sing in English, yes, of course I'd sing in English. You know what my career is going, what I'm doing right now. At that point, I was really just starting my solo career. Um, and it was a great first conversation. And then one thing led to another. Obviously, a lot of discussions, a lot of uh, between lawyers, rabbanim, and all things got involved. How things could work and how to make it work and why how we're going to do this. Fast forward, uh, and then, yeah, we uh, were able to get a record deal, and we started working on this album. Yeah. So back to your question. Yes. What was, so they, they didn't have in mind necessarily to break into the Jewish market or take over that market. It was, it was obviously trying to sign me as a more of a worldwide artist to get out there. And especially in such a, in a world where it's really such a small world where everything is so interconnected and we're so much in touch with people that we ha- we weren't able to be in touch with other people till now, it's equally important, it's even more so important to have people from different backgrounds and different places to, to show, to shine in their own way and to show we're all one. Um, but Why is that message that, so important to you? Because I think there's a, uh, there is a certain divide in the world that we... That people are different, are different. And I think the message is, so this is actually one of the songs, that one of the only songs on the album that are original songs, which I co-wrote with some amazing musicians and amazing songwriters. What We sat on a blank piece of paper. What are the messages here? What is the message that we want to convey? What is the message? So we wrote Face the Unknown, which the chorus is, you and I are one, wherever we're from, we all shine under the same sun. But yes, we are different. We can't take that away. Everyone is different. That's the first lyric of the song. Everyone is different. Difference is between. And difference between, you know, you and I are different. And everyone in the street is different. Two brothers are different. Mm. Everyone is different in their own way, in their own unique, in their own special way. Yet, we are one and together. So it's, it's important to make that distinction that we're different and unique in our own way. But at the end of the day, we all are we have so much more in common as human beings than we are, that we have our differences, and that's what we should come together as. Right. right. So my question to you is: Growing up in your circles, in your own world, did you feel different? Um, probably depending where it's relative. Amongst Difference friends, amongst uh, did you have different like you know passions, or did you feel different growing up from your friends, from your family, from your community that you know? And perhaps this is why you relate to this message of difference and bringing and bringing unity together. Um, I, not really. I, it's relative. Being different is relative. Different. You're always different. Well, Just I'm talking how about different. Shulen. I'm talking about I, you. Of course, I know. I'm saying I'm always different. I can be different than my sibling. I can be different than other elder Hasidim. I can be different than other Hasidim in general. I can be different than anyone walking on the street, which I am. And everyone is different. So if I'm more, if I'm less comfortable being this different than that different, there probably will be, yeah, I mean, growing up, if you go uh, far apart, you're all, you're all the same, so it's not a, but if you go a little bit out there, you kind of feel a little bit sometimes treated differently or steered on or looked on differently. And today that's actually an exciting challenge for me. Every I travel Baruch Hashem a lot. Every time I go on a flight, on a plane, or in the train or whatever, wherever it is, you see people from all different backgrounds and I look at it as a challenge for me to show how normal we are and how we're, we are all the same really. So I always make conversation and smile and tell them what it's all about. And people are sometimes so surprised and they're, they're so happy to be like, wow, really? I, did not, I didn't think, the, wow, that's amazing. And every opportunity we have with another human being to make that connection is uh, is an opportunity. That's yeah, that's incredible. This, this outgoingness that you have, it's funny because like you said initially, growing up, 
you were the shy one amongst your friends and here you right. are now making like random conversations with strangers. Yeah, it's, I'm still shy, but it, I, I think that it, there's a driving force behind that's pushing me. Like I can make a difference and I wanna do it and I go that extra step to make that initial conversation. So ba balancing the two worlds of universal mes messages, singing, you know, Yiddish, English songs, um, is there a resistance that's coming back or challenges that are coming back your way from your inner community, from the place that you came from? And if that's the case, how do you keep yourself focused on the, on the girl, on the goal and to keep on going? It's a great question. So one of the things, um, that I made sure before signing with Universal is that it's okay for me. Everything should be okay for me to do. I'm not gonna you know, get myself into something that I wouldn't be comfortable like you doing. Like a conversation with the rabbis. And of making, course, yeah. yeah, everything was like, you know, would I be able to do this? Would I be able to do that? What came, could up, I, what came up in that conversation? What are some examples? So, exa I mean, every the main thing came up, like yeah. that, that there is no black and white to say, this is gonna happen, this is not gonna happen because every scenario is gonna be different. Yeah. And we set up some type of system that every question that comes up is reviewed and it's questioned by Rabbanim and everything is reviewed. So by one of the meetings actually with, with pretty the prominent Rabbanim in, in, in today's generation was like, look, we'll have to review this. We're going to review every step of the way and everything. And whatever we decide that this is the right thing to do, you just go and move along with it. Don't listen to everything. Of course, there's going to be people and you should respect it. People are not going to like certain things and you should respect it, but don't let it phase you because you know you have this backing and you know you did the right thing. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I've said no to many things and it may hurt a little bit in the beginning, but you know you're doing the right thing. So you say no to opportunities and then What's one forward. opportunity you said no to in my sharing? Um, so I'll, <laughs> it's interesting. I'll tell you some an example that ended up coming back in a good way. Okay. So I'll tell that to you. I just want to finish this thought, if it makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you got to make sure. Yeah, and now that we're doing this, you know, the, the album, the music video and stuff, I'm very sensitive on everything it should, because I understand the sensitivities to the from world. You know, I'm not specifically selling this album in the groceries in Brooklyn and, and, and you know, everywhere, because if, People don't want, at the end of the day, it is secular songs. And I don't want I don't want to push secular songs if they don't want their kids listening to secular music. So I'm not, it's not there. If it's available, if you want to get it, you can get it. So I'm not, yeah, We're I'm very sensitive. I'm respecting of, of everyone's community. boundaries. Exactly. Right. And, uh, you know, I know whatever I do is is uh, reviewed halakhically, rabbanim, and every situation, every scenario is, you know, made sure. And... To answer your question, but Baruch Hashem, it's actually been amazing, amazing feedback. People are like, wow, you're cheering you on. Yeah. And just, you're representing us, make a Kiddush Hashem and show them that we're, you know, just like everyone else. Show them, we got. Show, us that the, show them that the music uh, scene, the music talent in the Jewish market is, is you know, everyone within their own right. angle I wants know that to. happens a lot towards me. Like that happens a lot. Usually those types of messages of like, yo, go out there and like you'd be in Kiddush Hashem. And usually right. comes a lot from the... Jewish communities that are not within your own community. Usually within your own community is a lot more criticism that, you know, it's, you know, that, that they don't. Right. Yeah. And that's support. what I'm saying. It was, it's surprising that everyone more or less threw across the board. Of course, there are people that are going to have concerns and yeah. I respect those concerns. But like I said, if I have my, um, Hadracha, my Marderch, the way yeah. it is, because I know I'm doing the right thing. And they actually said that, you know, you should respect the people, but you have Rabbanim for a reason not only to make sure that you're not doing the wrong things, also to make sure that, you know, but whatever you're doing, doing you're back is, and exactly, you got, you got and you have, exactly, so. Yeah, because we have seen like, you know, wardrobe changes, you know, the, the jacket's coming off, the sweater's going on, you know, it's uh, just, you're mixing it up, you're mixing it up. I'm always been the same way, always been. It's, it's great. So it's, they like to capture certain parts of me that sure. other people haven't seen. When I go to a gig or I go in a shul, you know, I'm never that way. Right. But everything has a time know. and place for everything. Exactly. No, absolutely. But I do want to go back. What What is that one, like an opportunity that you oh, said so no to? Oh, so the opportunity. So yeah, just a few weeks ago, actually, someone reached out that they're doing a, that there's a movie coming out um, about the president in the Philippines during the Holocaust, President Emmanuel Quezon. He rescued about 1,300 Jews during the Holocaust. 
Wow, interesting. Yeah, I, I never knew that. Yeah. Uh, so, Me either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so interesting. So okay. he wanted to rescue a lot more, about 10,000, but the Japanese invaded the Philippines. Anyway, they're doing a story, a movie um, uh, about his story. They actually did the movie in the Philippines. It was an amazing success. They won a few awards and they're making an international film and they want to record a theme song. Mm -hmm. And the lead um, person in the film is his, is his wife and she sings to him. So he regrets, at the end of his life, he regrets not doing enough. He wanted to save more Jews because he saw what was going on. And the film finishes with this song that telling him, you've done so much. And they had this vision of his wife telling him you've done so much and then a Jewish person telling him, we're thankful you did so much. Don't beat yourself up and you've done so much. Give yourself credit. Yeah. So they wanted to do the lead actress and the Jewish singer. They wanted a duet and they were you know, making this so exciting and saying, this is going to be nominated for an Oscar. We're submitting it for an Oscar. All this excitement. All the hoo-ha, yeah. A lot. And I, you know, I said, of course not. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. You know, I can't do a duet with a woman. Um, and this was all through, you know, the agencies that were representing me and trying to negotiate. Um, so I, whatever, I said no. A week later, they came back and said, we watched your stuff. We watched it. I think you would be perfect for it. We're going to do a solo version. Wow. And so they, we recorded the song. It's been submitted actually to be nominated for an Oscar. And the show is, per, the, the movie is premiering on the Holocaust Memorial Day, January 27th. Wow. So that's incredible. Yeah, that's yeah. well congratulations on that. And I'm most and so so amazed by the um sticking by your principles. Yeah. And um and sometimes sometimes you know it's beyond our control and sometimes it comes back around like Exactly. I mean, I've turned down opening for certain acts and I've turned down certain performances that I didn't think even though it was technically halakhically okay, it just just wasn't right sepasnished as they say. I said no, but it's other opportunities come and you know, just yeah. follow, follow the way. And like everything else happened till now, things come yeah. to you. Yeah, opportunities arise. Yeah, it and reminds me of the time when I, um, after one of my videos went viral on YouTube, I got reached out to be on a show in Israel called Big Brother. It's, it's, big, yeah, it's yeah, a show in America, so they adapted yeah. in other countries. And like, you'll be the perfect guy in the house and you can be this, you know, Orthodox Jew in this mix. And, you know, to, did it cross my mind that I played with the thought it would be fun, would be interesting? Yeah, but ultimately it wasn't something that, you know, in the right, bigger picture of things I didn't want to do. Um, so it's, and I, I definitely, um, I definitely hear what you're saying in, in, in certain ideas that, you know, sometimes there are engaging things that come your way, but you got to come back and figure out, okay, yeah. is this in line with what I believe in? Exactly. What are some of your non-negotiables? The when it comes to, like, the, to like, certain principles, yeah. I mean, of course, not performing on Shabbos. Perform, I mean, those kind of things. Yeah, I mean, the straight out. Straight out, yeah. The, the black and whites things that I would not, not obviously not do. All right. That's amazing. The um, When moving forward in, in this in your career now, what what is something that you're excited about that's, um, that you want to see bring into fruition? What's like the dream type of project that you love to work on? Uh, so he did now an album with the Universal, which is amazing. The All entire right. process was crazy. I mean, it was working with professionals that you've always looked up to. Um, we did a soundtrack for a movie now, which is also amazing. Wow. Um, when I'm looking, I, 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 obviously good a good tour, a good show, and good great venues, beautiful venues across the world. That would that would be because the goal is not necessarily doing that. The goal is reaching as many people as possible and making an impact on their life. And I see that the most on live performances. I can do uh, a performance even when it's 20, 30, 40 people or a few hundred people or thousands of people, there's always gonna be people coming over to you and telling them what an impact it had on their life or in that moment or whatever it is, what it meant to them. And that feeling is just, just priceless. That's what I would like to do with as many as inspire as many people as possible. And when you do bigger venues and bigger shows in a live way, I think that's the ultimate like goal. It's wow, it's yeah. And what we in the day that we live in today, I mean, it's it's quite incredible the opportunities that one could right get, you know. And of course, through the, through the tools of social media, YouTube, I mean. Hence, Universal found you through exactly through this uh, through this platform. And you, what you're doing, you're accomplishing as well. I mean, I follow like your that. stuff. It's amazing. Appreciate you're, it. You sometimes give such a such chizik and such you know a, a, 
Let's start this day fresh. Let's get this let's the energy. Let's do it. Yeah. You oh, know, for sure. Millions of views on your YouTube videos Thank and God. collaborations. It's it's incredible what we can do today. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, it, 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 sometimes people do like to tend and like and get scared of such such some tools, but right. I think what you're doing incredibly and like what I'm trying to do with 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 the, with the technology and the things that are blossoming in the world today is to use that transform that for a positive good to connect exactly. with people and to make this world um, a much brighter and. And peaceful place. place. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you, I mean, I, from what I understand from having conversations with singers and such, it could be a hard life, right? You're traveling a lot. You're moving right. around. How do you find that career and family balance when you're always on the go? It's a, it's a great question. Uh, it's twofold a question. It's, the, it's that aspect, the, the family aspect. It's also the, the high and lows in your own life because you... You can travel for, I mean, last week I was in Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Manhattan, like I did a show here, so I had to come back wow. and two shows and, and in five times, all in one week uh, in Toronto, all in one week. Wow. So <laughs> it was crazy. like, yeah, the high and the, it's just going, going, and then you could have a quiet time, a few days that you're like relaxing. Um, but the point is you have to live in the moment and be very mindful about everything and the bigger picture. Live in the moment, but have your eye on the bigger picture and see, okay. Um, but that that schedule, that lifestyle versus someone that works from nine to five sometimes doesn't even see their, they don't see their children until Shabbos because, you know, they get up in the morning before the kids are up or, you know, or they get home after the kids are asleep. So the advantage on my end is when I am home, I'm there. Right. I take them to school. I pick them up. I play with them. I'm, I give them the, as much attention as I could during the day. And that could be sometimes two, three days in a row. Um, yeah, but it's definitely hard. A lot of Shabbat I'm out. And a lot of times I'm out for a week or two. Amazing. Um, so if your child came up to you and said, hey, I want to get into this line of business. I want to become a singer. Would you encourage it? Or were you like, ah, blah, 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 maybe try something? In <laughs> I, if you, it depends what he really, if he really wants to, that's the most important thing. You got to follow your heart and, uh, I'll just give him tools and, and, uh, advice along the way. Maybe a Things connection or tool, an email, yeah, not sure. a little bit, exactly. <laughs> Help him out. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I don't think they're going to go that down that route for now. Like not interested. Not, not so much. Not that way. Right. Got it. It's, and maybe someone's any advice to someone who's trying to break into, the, the music career and the music industry, anything that worked for you or didn't work for you that you could, you know, share some wisdom about that? I think it ties back to uh, what I said in the beginning. You have to do it like for the art, not necessarily for to become professional or to, to become famous or to become something. You just perfect your instrument. If you're a singer, make sure you got, you know, good training, learn songs, train your ear, get your music, get, be, be, be up to par and the professional level. And then I think people will enjoy it. Opportunities will come. And, you know, make yourself, you got to put yourself out there as well. I made my own website, I had all my social medias. That's how people were able to contact me and make sure to reach out to and to respond to every person that reaches out. And that's when you, uh, but as far as the, the art is, that's, that's the most important thing. That the, that's the essence of it. Amazing. Shalom. All right. Talk to me. What is, um, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you and hear your music and, and learn more about you? Everywhere digital is, I mean, almost everywhere. Just IamShulam.com, at IamShulam on most platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where, wherever. All, all, those, all the places. All right. TikTok, not yet. Not yet. I know. I'm so late to the game. I got to get on TikTok. All right. right all right. Oh, fantastic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to teach me a thing or two then. I will, yeah. You know, All we'll right. do a session right now. I'll break it down for you. Let's do the first that's, TikTok video. All right. That's a good that's idea. A, that's a great idea. All right. Making awesome. it happen. <laughs> Shalom, thank you so much for being on the podcast, for coming out and sharing your story and your inspiration. And may you continue to uh, achieve the many successes that come your way and build opportunities for yourself oh, and, and inspire, us, inspire us all. Oh, man. And uh, thank you so much for having me on this podcast and spreading the message of love and unity and doing what you do best. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to end off perhaps on a certain note and a certain tune? What do you want to hear? Uh, what the, it's, you know. You and I are one and wherever we're from, we all shine under the same sun. Love could never be wrong. 
and it helps us be strong as we face the unknown. Show Lemmer. That's ah, it. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, man. Ah.